This is topic two, video C, and corresponds and summarizes um, chapter six from Hoberman's Data Modeling Made Simple. The chapter is entitled, What is a Relationship? Well, what is a relationship? Simply put, a relationship is a rule that connects two entities. A relationship is a, is a rule that connects two entities. Think about you and your parent. Well, there's a rule that can take between you and the human being that is your parent. So that would be you an entity, them an entity, and there's a link between you two. Now, in data modeling, we don't worry about specific entities like you and mom and you and dad. We worry about the generic entities of a person to another person or a person to an institution. Um, but uh, you still see that relationships collect, uh, connect entities. There are two types of rules that relationships follow. One is known as the structural rule. Um, also, we call that the cardinality of the relationship. And the other is the referential rule or the referential rule. Um, th they're very related to the, each other. And if you have your cardinalities correct on a relationship, the referential rules kind of take care of themselves. But let's take a look at, at some rules about the university. A student can take many courses. Well, that's a structural thing, right? A student courses. Student can have many courses. A professor can teach many classes. That makes sense. A professor, lots of classes. That's, um, but a referential rule would be something like a class must have one professor. Because if a class doesn't have a professor, it's not really a class, is it? Uh, or a course must have a course department and course number, like this course, BUIS 2400. That makes sense. You can't have a course without a, a, the letters, and you can't have a course without the numbers. you got to have both. Okay, think of this. A student must have a student ID number. Okay, so so you can see that that the the rules kind of kind of deal with the entities and deal with the data elements and and then also deal with the uh, structural relationship between entity to entity. Now in this semester, I'm going to be using the type of data model called a crow's foot diagram. A crow's foot diagram is named for these goofy uh, symbols you see over here in that corner of the of the presentation. And, and Hoberman also uses the crow's foot notation as well as just about every professional database person I have ever met uses the, the crow's foot notation instead of some of the other notations that exist. But if you understand a crow's foot diagram, you can understand other styles of diagrams. So let's talk about the diagram first. Up here in the, up here in the top, um, you can see that I have two entities. An entity is a rectangle, and I put the entity name A and B. A relationship would be a line between the entities. Boom. And the ends of the lines, where we're going to put our crow's feet, represent the cardinality between the two entities, represent the relationship between the two entities, represent the rules between these two entities. For instance, up above, here's a, uh, here's a, uh, uh, a little example of two entities. Imagine you're working for your veterinarian's office. Imagine you're working for a doctor who takes care of, of pets. So what's the relationship between a pet and an owner? Let's see what I put here and see if we can agree. Well, we agree that there is a relationship between a pet and an owner, right? An owner owns pets, and a pet is owned by owners. And notice I put the word owns between. So I say an owner owns pets, and a pet is owned by owner. So you get how that relationship we're going to call the owns relationship. Sometimes it really helps to label a relationship. Don't use a generic word like has or or something like that. Use a word that, that makes sense for the relationship, that really describes the relationship. So um, I'm going to say that a pet is owned by one and only one owner, and an owner owns one or more pets. 
And you can see the crow's feet over here. Whoops. See the crow's feet over here. Um, that there are four different symbols that we use. The two bars represent one and only one. The bar with a zero represents zero or one. The greater than with a bar represents one or more. And the greater than with a zero represents zero or more. Now, could I have done this diagram differently? So maybe I'm modeling this. This is subject area model, real high level kind of thing. And I, I went to the client and said, so this is what I understand your business to be. And, and the doctor would say, well, I don't know. You know, instead of calling them owner, can we call them customer? Well, it's easy enough to do because I can just erase owner and write customer in. And then the doc says, well, you know, we do occasionally get people that come in and buy things from us that don't have a pet. What? And he goes, yeah, you know, maybe somebody wants to buy some heartworm medicine or some flea medicine, but uh, they don't bring their cat to us. That's okay. We, we sell it to them anyway. We just charge them a lot. Oh, well, I don't know if your vet would do that. Mine might. Mine's, uh, but, but, uh, um, so, and then the vet says, and, and what happens when the pets all die? And uh, you don't have any pets right now. Uh, okay, so uh, um, at this point, I may want to change my model to say, instead of owner, customer, a customer owns zero or more pets. But a pet, if a pet exists, it has to be owned by only one customer, by only one customer. Um, that kind of makes sense, right? So we started with this model, but by thinking about a little bit more and by progressing a little bit further, it evolved into a little different model. But that subject area model is a much better representation of what the business actually experiences. So let's look at uh, three examples. For instance, uh, let's look at the relationship between a movie and an actor. Um, a movie stars an actor stars in a movie. And a movie has many actors that star in it. You know, you could have five or six big stars in a single movie, couldn't we? And an actor can be in lots of movies over their career. So the relationship between movie and actor, I defined as an actor has zero or more movies. An actor has stars in zero or more movies. And a movie has zero or more stars. How could a movie have no stars? Well. What if it's a documentary? What if it's a nature documentary and there are no humans? Um, it's all just nature sounds and it's a movie. Well, that would be a movie with no actors. Could you have an actor without any movies? Well, I guess there are lots of actors in Hollywood waiting tables with no movies yet because they've not gotten a job yet. Would they be in the... Uh, I don't know, would they would they be actors at that point or not? That's an argument you could make one way or the other. But uh, um, that still kind of shows the relationship, though, between actors and movies. Let's look at the relationship between a country, state, and counties. A country can have zero or more states because a state, a country, could have no states at all. For instance, um, uh, the Holy See, which is a little tiny country in Italy that's the home of the uh, Roman Catholic Church, the, the Vatican. Um, it has no states. It is its own state. It only has one state. But here in the United States, we currently have 50 states. So a country can have zero or more states. But a state, Ohio, Kentucky, Texas, Rhode Island, belong to one and only one country. So a country can be made up of zero or more states, but a state is made up, you know, belongs to one and only one country. Let's think about counties within states. A state can have one or more counties in the state, and a county belongs to one state. Scioto County, Ohio. Boyd County, Kentucky. Now, could you have 
Franklin County, Kentucky, and Franklin County, Ohio. Yeah, but those are two different counties because they belong to two different states, don't they? And each Franklin County belongs to just one state because there are multiple Franklin counties with the same name. So you kind of see that relationship. And up above is a relationship that, that I use a lot in, in my demonstrations and, and lectures. It's the idea that an owner owns zero or more cars, but a car is owned by one and only one owner. Listen to the way I'm reading this very carefully. Look at that diagram. A car is owned by one and only one owner. An owner owns zero or more cars. So I'm actually reading it right across the line. I'm reading it right across the definition. Don't get those crow's feet backwards because then it doesn't mean what you think it means. An owner owns zero or more cars. A car is owned by one and only one owner. Be sure you read it the right direction when you're creating your own diagrams and writing your own relationships. Thanks for watching. Remember, this video is copyright 2020 by James Imbrano, PhD. All rights are reserved.